In this case, we want to show that the triangle on the left being similar to the one on the right is always going to tell us that the one on the right is similar to the one on the left. The first step in exploring this is to determine whether or not these two triangles in our example are in fact similar. Type in the chat, do you think they're similar or not? Yes, these triangles are similar. We need reasons why though. I took the time on my own time for you to verify that the three angles shown in each triangle are in fact congruent. We only had left to figure out is there a dilation, a scale factor proportional for the edges on both triangles? What scale factor did you get? Type it in the chat. Yeah, if you guessed one half, you are correct. Because I can take, if I'm going from the one on the left to the one on the right, which I'm gonna start with because that's what the question asks, a prime B prime, the length of A prime B prime divided by the length of AB would be two divided by four, which is one half. And if I use a different side, I can confirm that that is still the case. For instance, I notice that if I take the length of side BC and I multiply it by one half, then I do in fact get six times a half which is three. You can check yourself that it's also the case that the longest side in both triangles is proportional by that same scale factor. I'm gonna say that R equals one half is the scale factor from ABC to BC to, to A prime B prime C prime. And now it's worth us going through the process of finding a similarity transformation. Remember that means first figure out how to dilate, then figure out how to move the triangle from the left, our ABC, onto our triangle from the right. The first thing I did was write down the coordinates of each of the points of our triangle ABC. Those are written right underneath the graph at the moment in green. We determine the scale factor between the lengths of sides ABC and A prime B prime C prime. So my first step, I'm going to write this right under question B. We'll dilate from the origin with scale factor R equals one half. I'm going to need a little more space in here. There we go. And let's go ahead and show that new triangle now. Here on the left, each coordinate, I'm going to multiply by one half. Do this on your own. Great, I've shown the dilation here complete with the lines through the origin that remind us when we dilate, we slide points along the rays. Now that I've dilated, I have to look at the triangle and see how could, I how could I move, transform my small triangle X, Y, Z in order to get it onto the position for A prime, B prime, C prime. Hmm. Well, I'm kind of looking at it sideways. I think it's possible that there's a rotation I could do that would make this happen. Let's now rotate that triangle um, with center just zero, zero. And I'm gonna use that so I can just flip it around. It's the easiest. Remember, we learned that when we rotate something with respect to the origin, it, all we need to do is change the signs of X and Y. So I'm gonna rotate triangle X, Y, Z with center zero, zero. That's gonna change the point X from having coordinates negative two, three to having coordinates two common negative three. X prime will be two common negative three. Y prime will be four common negative two. And Z prime will be three comma one. So there is my new triangle. 
And look at that. We can see from the picture now that our two shapes are oriented in the same way. There we go. So now my last move is going to be to translate. And we know that this can be simplest in this at this point because now I'm just translating to line up two corresponding vertices. So let's go ahead and now translate. We need Y prime to land on top of B prime. So I'm gonna draw that vector in. Notice that vector goes over by one and up by how many? Type in the chat. Goes over right one and we have to go up to that six. So we're gonna go up seven. That's the path that maps us in the one direction. Question C. Why is it true that we can go the other way? Most of us guess that you can. Let's see why. This is what proves the symmetry of this similarity relationship. Step one, we have to dilate. How do I dilate to make triangle A prime, B prime, C prime the same size as ABC? If you said use the reciprocal scale factor, you are correct. Since one half was the ratio from the small triangle sides to the large one, the reciprocal ratio would represent how to multiply by the small to get to the large. So I'm gonna start out by dilating with center zero, zero and scale factor two. Uh-oh. You know what I'm noticing? That problem is my triangle is going to go over the edge of my diagram. So we're going to be able to write down exactly what the coordinates are. However, we are not going to have room to see it on our graph. To fit all of it in, I had to shrink the whole image quite a bit and extend my graph. Let's see how it fits now. We're going to get the point six comma 10. That's point L corresponding to the dilation of point A prime. Then we have the point eight comma 18. So that's gonna be two more out eight. <laughs> Not the best art in the world, but that is our dilation. So now I have the dilation, then I have to figure out how to make the rotation happen. Um, I don't wanna do a rotation and a translation because if I rotate in this example now, I'm going to end up rotating way down into the bottom quadrant three and I'm gonna have all the problems I did before in terms of space. But I notice that there is a center if I'm clever, that I can find that will actually um, allow me to rotate those two points directly onto one another. So if I take the common midpoint between each of the points and their images, so like if you look from A to L, and then we know that B should get mapped in, you can even see, do you see these two are actually on the same line through the origin? or not the origin, but on that same line. And then lastly, from C to M, there's a common center. It's not gonna be in exactly the right point because of my horrible artwork, but it's somewhere around there. You can see that the distance of each point to that center is the same in either direction. And that center will serve as my center for my rotation. Q. Notice if I rotate 180 degrees around Q, M will map onto where C is and the other two map onto each other as well. So in that way, um, I'm going to be able to map triangle LMN <coughs> onto triangle, if I have my letters listed right, L did go to A, but M went to C actually. 
the way I wrote the letters. So it would be ACB. But that's okay based on how I did my transformation at the previous step. So in this way, I've been able to transform A prime, B prime, C prime back onto ABC. Because I could do that via dilation followed by, in this case, just a rotation, I also could have rotated around the origin and then translated, I'm successful. Notice it is not a surprise that the exact same types of rigid motions can be used to rotate or to, to transform my original image to its similar cousin, regardless of whether I move from smaller to larger or larger to smaller. That since there's a sequence of transformations, all of which I know how to reverse, that will get me from my triangle on the left to my triangle on the right, or vice versa, I see, yes, if two triangles are similar, if ABC is similar to A prime, B prime, C prime, then it's always true that there's a similarity transformation to move in the other direction. I have symmetry in my similarity expression.